How you doing, fight fans? EJ Boxing Live here. I'm going to do this profile on Guillermo Jones, yeah? And um, I'm telling you, the reason why I'm doing this profile is one of these fighters that I think a lot of fight fans don't really know who he is or didn't know too much about him. So I'm going to express such a light on him. And hopefully, you know, you listen to this, uh, uh, my... Um, my explanation on, on, on this fighter that maybe you go and check him out and um, I think it's worthwhile that you check him out so here we go so Guillermo Jones um, he's born in uh, in Pan Cologne Panama um, yeah he obviously speaks Spanish there and um, he was born in 1972 and now Guillermo Jones yeah, this is one of them rare guys his, um, his, his height is registered at six foot four very tall guy and um comes from serious poverty in panama and obviously you know roberto duran comes from the same similar background um so guillermo jones obviously he started his pro career in 1993 and in his first uh should i say 10 fights first 10 fights at the welterweight division he got 10 knockouts in first fight so first 10 first 10 fights in in the first kind of first round he's got 10 knockouts in um in the first round and that's impressive already but at six foot four in the worldweight division you're talking about something like a uh, Hearns how, how tall was Hearns I think Hearns was like six foot six foot um I think Hearns was the barely, I think Hearns was a six foot so Guillermo Jones is six foot four at the worldweight limit so you're looking at this guy very tall guy it was gangly skinny guy um in the worldweight division so most of his fights were in Panama and then finally yeah finally gets his first opportunity at uh, a uh, world championship a uh, world championship against the middleweight champion um middleweight light uh middleweight champion that is um uh, Lenon Bunswani and um this is very interesting in his first fight and um nothing notable um about um Guillermo Jones he's promoted by Don King and you'll see in the playlist I'm going to put in the description box I swear this guy gets robbed twice he has two fights with this dude and in the two fights he gets robbed and then I'm telling you the frustration of Guillermo Jones going for it people can't believe it and also with Don King Don King as his promoter you'd kind of think um um, he would get the decision. The first fight was a draw, and um, you couldn't believe it. And the second fight, clearly, clearly had him winning the fight, and he lost on on the scorecard. The scorecards read 114-114, and the uh, second card skied 114-114, and one judge has got it 115-114 for Lenar for Bonswani. So um, he won by a majority uh, majority decision um, to to retain his belt. And it, this is in, that is in his second fight, and then it's this frustration. So from that point onwards um what Guillermo does then obviously two chances to win a championship really really um he won a championship actually in the world weight division but it's a WBA federate federate um champion so he hasn't won a belt but it's not um official world belt but he's won a, a belt of just a just an intercontinental belt kind of thing but his first job at legit championships he gets robbed and then we're moving down the list now and Guillermo Jones gets his second opportunity for a world title Second opportunity against the great <laughs> Johnny the Entertainer Nelson here in, in Sheffield, and he comes to Sheffield. Don King, um, Stacy Killing, Stacy Killing, he's the um, he used to train, help train Mike Tyson in the corner, and everyone in the arena had Guillermo Jones winning this fight. Everybody, you know, everybody talked to uh, they talked to uh, the trainer at the time, Brendan Ingle, and he was saying, you know, he's, I don't know what's wrong with Johnny. Everyone's saying you'll see in the play in the video itself if you watch it that he's losing the fight that that Johnny Nelson is losing this fight and again again Guillermo Jones gets robbed. I couldn't believe it. We got a draw, a split decision. It was a split decision draw. Uh, the scorecards read uh, so um, they've got it uh, one thirteen one sixteen, and I think that's for um, I think that was for Guillermo Jones one fifteen one thirteen for for um, Nelson and what and Larry had a junior one fourteen one fourteen. Now like what the heck? People couldn't believe it. People couldn't believe it because they had him clearly winning. It shouldn't have been a nice decision. So Johnny Nelson retained his ball. And I think Johnny Nelson, after that fight, if I'm if it was taken wrong, did he continue? Actually, he did continue a couple more fights after. And he's got the longest reign as a cruiserweight uh, with, uh, was it 13? 
uh, 14 defences, 13, I think it's 13, 13 defences of the WBO Cruiserweight Champions, the longest reign, and Marco Hook tied up as well, um, before he lost to um, Kowaki, and um, so Guillermo Jones, you know, he arguably should have won that fight against Johnny Nelson and got robbed again. So that's three title shots, yeah, from from well from super welterweight. So that's light middleweight and um, at the cruiserweight. And even think about it, that's right. So basically, he started his career at welterweight, and then he's challenging the cruiserweight champion and to, to a draw. And Johnny Nelson's, regardless, was the longest reigning cruiserweight champion. The Buswani guy, um, I was talking about the guy at the light middle, also beat Terry Norris, and he lost. He finally lost his belt to uh, David Reed um, when after that he retired. But beating Terry Norris is quite impressive. Guillermo Jones had a draw with him, and then the other one he lost. So these two guys, like some really good fighters, he's losing against it's very exciting fights. The Johnny Nelson fight was just really messy, but I had. Uh, Guillermo Jones winning the fight and you know it's, it's, it's impressive that a guy from Worldweight can go up and challenge and be, be quite be quite uh, dominant against a cruiserweight champion who's a long reigning cruiserweight champion so anyway uh, at this point after he loses now he takes a two year absent comes back in in, in uh, 2004 so that when he for the challenge on Nelson it was 2002 and obviously despondent about the decision and he slowly starts crawling his back up until eventually in 2005 he goes against Steve SAS coming at them. Everyone knows who he is. Um, the IBF cruiserweight champion, but not at the time when he faces Guillermo Jones. They were both. Uh, uh, Steve, um, Steve Cunningham had an undefeated record and Guillermo Jones obviously lost a couple of fights that I think it's uh, had a couple of fights he's lost as well so coming into this fight and he, him and him and Steve they put on a great fight and it was arguably he can go one away I mean Steve Cunningham won the fight by a split decision but arguably a lot of people could say Guillermo Jones won it but it was a very close fight I'm not going to say oh he got robbed in that one but he got robbed against Johnny Nelson and in a Bozwani fight definitely but this fight was a close fight and and uh, Steve Cullum got the nod in that fight. And another frustration for Guillermo Jones. And then finally, he finally had enough. And I think he finally this is where he finally kicks in. And this is the way the this is where the run for me just finally kicked in with this guy that shows that how great he is from from like I said from world weight all the way up to the cruise weight. So he goes against Wayne Bray for it. And I'm telling you, in this playlist, I uploaded this fight especially. This fight is epic. Epic. Wayne Brayford was a former WBC champion himself. Um, he lost to O'Neill Bell uh, coming into this fight. So he wants to get it back. And Guillermo Jones picked up um, WBA uh, Frederick uh, Cruiserweight Championship. And um, he's got the WBC Latino Championship. And he's basically coming into this fight pissed off of getting to draw with Johnny Nelson, lost the split decision against Steve Cunningham, and also the two fights with Boswani. So this guy is on and light, and I'm telling you, you can see in this fight here what Guillermo Jones is about. What a fight! Backwards and forwards, the fight was going to eventually, Guillermo Jones overwhelms um, Wayne Brayfield, who's very good and very, very credible at the weight, and takes him out. In a spectacular knockout, and the referee put jumps in and stops the fight. And I tell you, that's one of the fights I've ever seen. It's an exciting fight. Definitely worthwhile watching. So, Guillermo Jones proceeds to this point. He goes this, and there's nothing as well. Remember, he's from Panama. So, he's coming to people's home territories in America, wherever. So, now, from this point onwards, now, he proceeds to get two more wins, right? And then goes against Furin Arsen in Germany, in Cologne, and in Hamburg, in Germany. Fury, uh, Fury and Austin coming into this fight, um, picking up the belt has beat Virgil Hill and he beat um, Grozzi Do um, Grozzi Dodgers, who also was a champion. I know he wasn't a champion at the time, but he beat him as a credible cruiserweight champion um, coming into this fight. And you think um, Fury and Austin is probably a lot of people had Fury and Austin uh, the favorite to win this fight, and Guillermo Jones proceeds to put the beating of a lifetime. Of a lifetime on Fury and Arson. I'm telling you, if you ever saw this this beating he put on him, and you're gonna see it because in the play, if you if anything, you can even skip the other one. He beat the crap out of Fury and Arson so badly in the tenth round, the referee jumped in to stop the fight, and it was an onslaught. He couldn't even get off. It was just a complete shutdown. I think the. Um, uh, how I can pull it, if you ever see Carth Rocks versus Arthur Abrahams, how that was a shout out, it was like that. But this in this fight here, um, Carth Rocks went the distance. Guillermo Jones will have no dissers. And the thing is, yeah, what I think Guillermo Jones learned in this fight, yeah, as he as he as all the frustration kicked in, yeah, he learned how to do his uppercuts because he's a tall fighter. He fights kind of like Diego Corrales. He likes to get up close. As he was getting in, he was throwing these wicked uppercuts and these hooks round head, and Fear and Arson couldn't deal with it. A couple of rounds, I I think I gave Fear and Arson a couple of rounds, but it was a 
dominant. Dominant over a WBA Cruiserweight Champion. This is where he picks up his first title. And you think to yourself, wow, this guy's going to go on to do things, yeah? After the frustration from Johnny Nelson and Buzzwadi, uh, them fights, Steve Cullen fights as well, right? So that's two fights on a row against credible Cruiserweight guys. And Fury and Arson still continuing right now, fighting right now. Wayne Brayfrit, like I said, the former WB champion. Fury and Arson was just trying to go on his run. He shut him up. Now he gets another couple of two fights there. And now we go into this fight here. The Dennis Ledbury fight. Now, Dennis Ledbury coming into this fight, KO'd Roy Jones Jr. and he beat James Tony on points. And they considered him as the WBA champion, even though Fury and Arson had the belt. The WBA is weird like that. They have like two champions as well. So, Don King, they saw it out. And now, now Guillermo Jones comes to Russia. Comes to Russia. And for this fight here, and I'm telling you, man, what a fight, mate. What a fight. The most brutal fight in boxing history that I've ever seen, like in life. I'm so um a lot of guys will talk about fights they've seen over the years, were probably brutal, but the most brutal one-sided fight I've ever seen, ever. Guillermo Jones um uh Dennis Levis face is looking like a frigging gargoyle. It is disgusting, blood. Passing everywhere, he's almost like for Rocky in one of the Rocky films. There, his face is swell up. Um, in the corner, um, the, his corner man is uh Costa Zoo. They ain't even got a bloody end swell. They use ice like Mike Tyson, and in, in, in when he went against Buster Douglas, that big block of ice on his face. It is everything there is. It is brutal. And you know what? In this fight, he's actually they had him actually losing the fight. And finally, after all the frustration, Guillermo Jones has been taking off the. He finally topples Dennis. The strong game champion in the 11th round and takes the WBA becomes the undisputed Devil Wear WA champion. Now, now this is where they think controversies ticks in. Now, um, Hatman made a video of recently that a lot of Russia they've been tampering with people's samples, samples um, in terms of drug testing. And I think I think Guillermo Jones is probably um, been one of them fighters at this point. Is probably victim of this thing. I can't prove it, but it's, it's shown that um, that they've been a lot of Russians. They've been messing with people's samples, and I think Guillermo Jones has been in that. Guillermo Jones a victim of this thing, yeah. And I'm telling you, Guillermo Jones for me is one of the all-time great comeback stories in boxing and one of the all time guys started at welterweight all the way to cruiserweight and dominate cruiserweight because you could imagine he's competing with the cruiserweight champions or very good cruiserweight champions right and um you could imagine what if he really got a shot at some of the other guys that maybe are welterweight i know he fought a lightweight middleweight super middleweight light heavyweight if he had got a shot at one of them but he didn't get the chance to he went all the way up to cruiserweight from from world weight and he's Bloody can compete hard, so it's like a um, almost like Sam Lanford. I don't know if you know about Sam Lanford, who started at um, basically started at a lightweight and went up to heavyweight and had some of the great um, heavyweight fights of all time in boxing history. So it's one of the stories that you must watch. Um, modern day. Um, folk hero for me, man, and in Panama as well. Um, so hopefully the Guillermo Jones story continues. Um, his race last fought, he fought is um, he fought actually in in uh, da, 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 da. He fought in um, what's it November of of last year, only a couple of months ago, and Panama and got um, a nice decision. So hopefully we might see Guillermo Jones again. But that run he put when he beat uh, Wayne Braithwaite, um, Fury and Arson, and, and Dennis Leverbe was very impressive. And I'm telling you, remember again, he started at Worldweight. So the playlist is in the in the description box. Hope you guys check it out and you guys enjoy the, the career of Guillermo Jones. Alright? Catch your next one. Peace. DJ Boxing Live here. DJ Boxing Live here. Live here, EJ Boxing Live here.